Hey guys, uh, so this is uh, the post-mortem discussion of uh, the Legacy Daily, or Legacy Challenge, I'm sorry, from July 14th. Uh, so I ended up getting 32nd place, exactly. I debated whether or not this video was actually worth uploading, but uh, I guess I figured I might as well. I feel like I came pretty close to going 5-2. and two. Um, Well... In round seven there, I was playing against uh, the dreaded Hagok deck. And, well, just what I realized... Well, I know that Leyline of the Void is um, it's just a wretched sideboard card, and especially in blue decks. The trouble is is that you end up mulliganing good hands uh, to get to hands that have Leyline of the Void. And you have to mulligan them because you need that graveyard hate pretty soon, and... The deck doesn't have a way to get to four mana on any kind of reasonably quick basis to cast Leyline of the Void. Um, and and what I realized is, well, this deck plays four Dreadhorde, Arcanist, and three Snapcaster Mage. And, you know, I was trying to figure out what kind of graveyard hate could actually beat a, ha a Hagok uh, deck. And, well, really, four Surgical Extraction with... Four Dreadhorde Arcanist and three Snapcaster Mage would, would pretty much be the best solution imaginable, uh, I believe. Haven't gotten a chance to try it yet. And, um, still getting, uh, round seven, game two, my second hand. Uh, it's something like Thoughtseize, Snapcaster, Dreadhorde. Can't remember if there's a cantrip. But, um, it's something I definitely would have kept with four surgical extractions in the deck. Um,. And so, yeah, if I just cut those ley lines for surgical extraction, uh, well, the deck would be a lot better, and I feel like I definitely would have got that round seven, and I'd be uh, sitting pretty at five and two. Um, but on the whole, yeah, death and taxes is a hard matchup, at least for this configuration. It seems like uh, Grixis definitely has the technology to beat death and taxes. Um... I mean, it might be, I mean, I, I just don't play Grixis a ton, and I haven't played with a different bunch of different builds. I don't know, I kind of would just wish a Braid was in the sideboard. Like, it, we're a little soft on answers to Sanctum Prelate. Um, I just don't have the experience to fiddle with the numbers perfectly to make this thing so it can reliably beat Death and Taxes, but the basic land mana base is kind of an issue. Because uh, you end up, you know, with a basic swamp in play, and your other black source is getting wastelanded away, and it's pretty easy for them to port you down. So, I mean, if I just drawn back to basics, I mean, that probably would have got the job done. Um, so, I don't, I don't quite know what what I would change. I uh, maybe just accept a bad death and taxes matchup. If I just had those surgical extractions instead of leyline of the voids, that would have been pretty sweet. But uh, there is the advent of Autumn, Autumn's Veil, vale, Veil vale of Autumn, that I lost to in round four. And uh, that seems just like just an incredibly good card for Storm and something that people are going to be playing going forwards. And so permanent base disruption for Storm seems like it's obviously uh, going to want to, you know, need to be a thing in the future. So, this deck runs none of that. And so that is a little unfortunate. Uh, playing a bunch of surgical Extractions, I, I guess, could help. Uh, but uh, that, that's sort of an issue with Grixis going forwards. Um, in any case, I'm going to try to talk myself into just playing the deck that I know best, which is Rug Delver, in the next uh, tournament and uh, next daily. The next Legacy Challenge on uh, next Sunday there. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be trying to make some videos uh, with a, a couple of the uh, Legacy uh, deck, uh, Rug Delver decks that have uh, come out here. Um, so, I believe this is the one that won the tournament by Baku91. I like this build. Uh, three Timer Glyph, two Hooting Mandrills, no Nimble Mongoose. So the deck goes pretty big. We've got three run in six in the main deck. It runs this fiery islet. Uh, my other videos, maybe you have seen my lonely sandbar 
The sideboard technology, I think that Lonely Stand Bar is certainly better, but I guess Fiery Islet fits into the main deck better. And having that 19th land seems uh, pretty good, uh, because just, you know, probably the number one way to lose to this deck is just getting Wastelanded out. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to try this build straight up. Uh, as I mentioned before, my biggest issue, I guess, with Rug Delver is finding a sideboard that I like. But I'm just going to be trying this this sideboard. It's got two Damping Sphere, which I guess is good against Storm. Kind of feel like I'd rather run a copy of Null Rod and a copy of Cinder Vines. But... Um, I'm just going to be trying some things out before I make any adjustments. Uh, we have this build with Noble Hierarch, and I think that this build is interesting as well. Uh, well, it, it certainly gets hosed by Plague Engineer. All kinds of X1s here. Um, but I think that Noble Hierarch, well, the, the, just the metagame is very Wasteland dominated. Uh, Noble Hierarch sure does eat it to Ren and Six, though. But, um, you get that mana advantage. You don't lose turn one to Wasteland. Uh, I mean, I'm sure many of you played back when Deathrite Shaman was legal and know what kind of effect that has. Um, I have tried Noble Hierarch builds uh, prior to Ren and Six and Modern Horizons being printed. Uh, whatever the Terramander printing was, it was around then. I can't keep track of all these new sets and what they are. Uh, but whichever one had Terramander, I was trying Noble Hierarch uh, back then. And I found it to be okay. I, I'd run it as a 3 of. Uh, it's just not a great top deck, but I guess the amount of control in the metagame seems low. Um, I, I don't really... Uh, I think something like this, I'm probably going to hate. But it seems like it'd be fun to try. I mean, Noble Hierarch's a cool card, and if you do get to play that turn one Noble Hierarch, you know, that, that seems pretty sweet. I mean, it does seem like it would go well with Winter Orb in the sideboard. Um, yeah, this one's pretty... I get, you know, Narset in the sideboard, that seems like a cool anti-control card. Magmatic Sinkhole. Uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, I'll be running a league with this, and we'll see how that goes. And then the last list I'm going to be trying here uh, is this list that won uh, this KMC tournament in Japan. So this build, it is a no goif build, uh, super shroud build with four delvers and uh, four mongeese and three true names, three run in six, which I'm definitely a fan of. Uh, it, so it only runs the four bolts there and no other removal spells, but you do have two spell snares to try to, as it you know, be an additional answer to those. Uh, Dreadhorde Arcanists. Um, so I, I think the combination of the eight one drops and spell snare is good. When you're trying to cast your own two drops and play spell snare, that can be a pretty tricky business uh, because you often have to tap down to play that Tarmogoyf. Um, so this one just kind of skips the two spot for the most part. Well, you got your Renin six, but that can put Morlin into your hand to help you hold up spell snare. Uh, so I would think this list seems pretty cool. Um, the sideboard, it's got your Null Rod, Vapor Snag, three Pyroblast. I mean, I, I don't really think that two Surgical Extraction and one Graph Digger's Cage is a great graveyard hate package, but I don't know. I guess I'm going to have to get used to it if that's... If I'm going to play Rug Delver. I don't know. Well, I, I guess I just do find Tormod's Crypt to be my favorite... I'm having a hard time drawing my graveyard uh, removal or graveyard answers in post sideboard games, as we saw in round seven of the Legacy Challenge. Uh, but I don't know. Well, I'm just going to be trying uh, what some other people are running. Uh, but the Rug Delver sideboard, it is tricky in this metagame. There's just a lot of different directions people can be coming from. Um, I usually like to run like broad, effective answers see in um, some of my other uh, you know lists I've come up with like uh, I run like three of braids four Tormod's Crypt three Pyroblasts lots of like three and four ofs that are broad answers that is my uh, preferred way of doing things
Uh, so I guess that's pretty much it. So I'm going to be uh, running those videos. Um, yeah, uh, the Legacy Challenge, it was a major irritation going 4 and 3, but I just figured I would go ahead and upload the videos anyway, since I guess, you know, I, I technically placed at 32. Um, yeah, I made a whole Legacy, uh, you know, challenge point or whatever that point is. So, uh, yeah, that was, I guess that was uh, worth the effort. <laughs> uh, certainly learned some stuff, and the build would be cool with surgical extraction in the sideboard. I'm hoping that um, someone who knows more about Grixis uh, than I do will come up with a slightly better list that I can rip off. <laughs> uh, but definitely play the four surgical extractions in the sideboard. That just seems really sweet. But uh, it definitely... Probably Storm is going to be rising in the metagame. I can't believe that Hogak hasn't... Uh, it's something we don't see that much. It seems like that deck should destroy. Just, I just don't think that this amount of graveyard hate that you see in this deck, for example, is at all enough. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, so I hope to be uploading some more Rug Delver videos soon. And uh, that's all for now. Thank you.